Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by Suburban Sill. This is the second video in my three-part series about outdoor planters. If you missed the first video, go ahead and check it out. It's about soil preparation. Um, otherwise, today we're going to head to the nursery and do some shopping for our outdoor planters. A few little tips before you head to the nursery. One, think about setting a budget. It's really easy to go crazy at the nursery and spend way more than you had planned. Two, have an idea of what you're looking for. That'll only help you stay in budget, but it will help you feel less overwhelmed when you're scouring the benches, um, trying to figure out what you're going to put in your planters. And another little tip when also trying to stay in budget, look for um, the six pack of flowers instead of um, flowers in the four, four and a half inch pots or larger. You're gonna have a huge savings when you go with those packs and that'll just help you um, get more bang for your buck. To start us off, I've got a short little animation that I put together about um, a simple design idea for your planters. Um, but if you wanna skip ahead and get right to the nursery, I don't blame you. But um, coming up next, just a quick little design tip that'll help you get off on the right foot. So you'll start with your pot, of course, whatever size of pot you're dealing with. Now, if you're dealing with a pot that is visible from all angles, you wanna start with your thriller in the middle. If your pot is just forward facing, start with your thriller in the back and work forward, but the idea is still the same. Just basic design principles. So first we'll start with placing our thriller. Now, some examples of a thriller, um, good thrillers would be anything that is growing straight up and tall. So tall grasses, I love a good Dracaena spike, some palms, maybe an elephant ear, um, or a Kimberly Queen fern that just grows straight up. Those are all really good thrillers. Now, I think of a thriller as not only being a tall growing plant in the middle, but then I fill in around with a medium thriller to add color. I like color. I like to mix it up. I don't really stick with one color. Um, I like purples and yellows and just, just whatever you want. So something that's medium height that's gonna flower all summer long. Um, some examples would be Vinca, Impatience, your grandma's favorite, the Petunia. Um, some coleus also are great for filling around and adding color with some bright foliage. Just kind of fills in the pot a little bit. So next, we're gonna do your filler. So this is anything, at least I consider anything, that's low growing, that's gonna grow um, just above the top rim of your pot. I like to pick things with flowers. You don't have to do flowers. You could do like a Dusty Miller that's just kind of like a white fuzzy um, green plant that's really fun I love those and they're really hardy especially in my zone um, but some good fillers sedum do like a golden sedum for some fun yellow baby's breath maybe um, there's a creeping phlox that's great some lower growing forms of dianthus and then there's also some shorter coleus that have really great pops of color bright reds um, and and greens and stuff like that. So the last thing, my favorite thing, is your spiller. So some examples of a spiller could be ivy, could be um, creeping jenny, could be um, my favorite is mizu trailing, red mizu trailing. It's a succulent and it grows over the side of your pot all summer and puts out these little pink daisy-like flowers. It is beautiful and I would recommend that for sure. You know, a potato vine is another good example of a spiller, anything that's gonna hang down over your pot. So now for the super fun part, we are heading to my favorite nursery to see what they have in stock for my outdoor planters, to find all my thriller spillers and fillers and um, get some beautiful foliage going on my patio.
First up, we have the thrillers. So a straight vertical fern makes for a great centerpiece or a backsplash, if you will, um, in your containers. Kimberly Queen fern, I've used them before, they're great. They love um, a shaded spot, so feel free to put them in the shade and part sun. Of course, you have a palm. You can get a lot of different heights on a palm, so if you wanna go really tall and you don't mind spending a little bit more money, get a giant palm. They also have some smaller varieties that will work just as well, that are lovely, maybe even a little bit wider. They might spread a little bit more and fill up a little more space. So this is interesting to me. A begonia, so they do grow up quite tall and kind of stock-like, these um, angel wing begonias. And I think they would make a stunning centerpiece if you have the right lighting and you know how to take care of them. They could be a little finicky, so do some homework and see if you have a great location for um, a cool angel wing begonia to add some amazing foliage to your arrangement. Canna, C-A-N-N-A. So I'm seeing this all over the nursery at a bunch of different heights and a bunch of different price points. They're green stalk-like um, plants. They also come in a nice deep purple. You can get a large one or a small one depending on how high you wanna go. And they will produce some pretty flowers. So um, this is an interesting centerpiece. I've never done it, but I'm really considering it for this year. Of course, the spike, um, or Dracaena spike. You can get purple, you can get green. This is a no-fail, stunning center focal point for any arrangement and super easy to take care of. I've used them numerous times. I think they're great. Now time for a filler or like a medium type thriller. Vinca loves the sun, grows really well, flowers all summer. It's a great option to put around your centerpiece or in right in front of your centerpiece. And they come in a bunch of different types of colors. Um, they don't get super tall, but they do grow um, really well. One of my all time favorite is coleus. Look at this beautiful, beautiful coleus. All these lovely colors. You have the green wasabi, some other type of confetti type of coleus. They're good in sun, some are good in shade. They, they're different, so you'll wanna double check which kind you've got. If it gets too much sun, the color will bleach, move it around, and it'll come back. I've done it before. These are great to propagate. These are so easy to take care of. They don't like the cold. Just keep that in mind, they like to be warm. Um, but these are great pop of color in any arrangement. This one's fantastic, flamethrower. I mean, beautiful, unique colors. Here's another um, spreader, but also kind of um, would be a trailing plant. Puts out, puts out lovely bluish purple um, flowers. So you could use this as a filler or a spiller, I think. Evolvus, Evolvus. Now we have Lobelia, Lobelia. I've used this before, um, or something similar. I don't know if this was the exact same one, but this is a nice spreader, a mound growing plant that will fill in um, around your vinca or, or your impatiens, whatever you do, and will fill in around your centerpiece that um, will also put out beautiful colored flowers. Now for our trailers. Here we have the potato vine. Comes in a bunch of different colors um, from a dark black to a purple to a green. Um, it'll vine over your pot. Give some great contrast to, um, if you have a lot of green foliage going on, add a little pop of color. Um, they even will flower a little bit here and there.
ivy, a classic trailing plant for any planter. You can get small leaves, big leaves, solid green, bright green, dark green. I've done ivy before. Um, it didn't really work well for me in the pot that I had it in. It took a long time to get going and by that time it was almost fall. So I'm gonna skip ivy this year, but it's great for sunny spots. Here is my all-time favorite spiller. This Mizu Trailing Red. It's a succulent, but it does great with, an, with a frequent watering. It has no problems and it'll put out the most cute, beautiful little pink-like daisy flowers all summer long. Also super easy to propagate and um, move indoors for winter. So there you have it. A quick little nursery tour of what's hanging out at my favorite spot and some of the things I'm considering for my outdoor planters. Join me for part three where we're going to get our hands dirty, set up our planters. You'll get to see what I decided to purchase and we will get our pots um, arranged and ready to go for summer. Thanks again for checking out my channel and for watching Suburban Sill. Subscribe um, and stay up to date on all the happenings this summer with plant DIY and plant rescues. Check me out on Instagram at Suburban Sill and we'll see you next time.